Hartman in uh, Genesis 6-2, it speaks of the sons of God. Oh. And uh, what happened to them? Are they are they, are they still around, or did they did they have supernatural powers, or could they make it through the flood, or or what? Oh, right, Genesis chapter six. I've got this thing right. These sons of God are something unusual. They're not the sons of uh, they're not the sons of Seth, as the commentators say. And it said the sons of God for the daughters of men. Notice it's a contrast between God and men, not a contrast between Seth and Cain. The sons of God called the daughters of men, they were fair, and they took them wise of all which they chose. Now here's the verse, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days before the flood, and also after that, after the flood, when the sons of God came to daughters of men. Now the sons of God were not here twice. And the question is, if they've been here twice, how'd they get to the flood if they drowned out? Are there two separate bunches, or one bunch that got through? At any rate, it says one thing. It says they were here before the flood and flew around with the women, and they were here after the flood and flew around with the women. And both times they flew around with women, they began giants. Now, to those who don't believe that, there's a very interesting portion of Scripture. It's on Deuteronomy chapter 2. They say, well, they weren't little, literal giants. They were just big men and reputation. And no, no way. Deuteronomy 2, after the flood, they're giants. They're giants after the flood. Deuteronomy 2.10. Deuteronomy 2.10. The Ammon 2.10. Deuteronomy 2.10. The Ammon was well therein in time past, the people great and many and tall as the Anakim, which were also accounted giants as the Anakim, but the Moabites called them Ammon. And then uh, coming on down, 20. That also was a kind of land of giants. Giants were up there in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zanzamim, a people great and many and tall as the Anika. They had giants there when the children of Israel come in. They said, we were as grasshoppers in their sight. That is, no, Goliath is one of the remnant of the giants when David shows up. And that bird is well over nine feet, probably around 11. So those giants are there, and they're there before the flood and after the flood. You know that's in the state in 2 Peter chapter 2, as it was the days of Noah, as it was the days of Lot. The days of Lot were after the flood. So those sons of God have been here twice for certain. And the question is, how did they get through the flood? Well, if they stayed in the earth, they didn't get through the flood. Because Psalm 82 says, I have said, you're God, but you shall die as men. And he says in Jude, the angel that kept not the first to save, he reserved the chains of darkness, and brought him a full of flood upon the ungodly in the days of Noah. So the ones that stayed here, that left their first estate, and became flesh and blood, that cohabitate with the daughters of men, they drowned as men. They couldn't transform themselves back into what they were if they left the first estate. Well, what about those that didn't leave the first estate? There is anything in the world that would keep a son of God, an angel, a 33-year-old angel, from surviving the flood as long as he didn't give up his angelic nature. Because if he kept his angelic nature, all he has to do is just take off the ground. They can travel the speed of light. They go up from plane, become visible and invisible as well, they can pass through the earth. As far as that goes, when the son of God was down here, he hadn't yet given up his angelic nature yet. When the flood came, he could simply go down the middle of the earth and wait and come back up on the over. As far as that goes. But the one that the ones that left their first estate, that took on human nature to cohabitate, they died like men. Now the question comes up, how could they cohabitate unless they had blood? And the question comes up if they had blood, where did they get their blood from? You see, I don't preach everything I believe, you see. <laughs> I mean, would it be a shock if I was candidating for a church and came in the Sunday morning, the first Sunday morning, and preached on the blood-sucking angels from Jupiter? <laughs> if I'd have had to flip the lid, man, so we better let the thing go. But you think, so there went two places they could have got their blood from. They either got their blood where Eve got it from, and she got her blood from a tree, and it was blood that ruined her. She, they either got it from there, they had access to that tree in the garden. And they may have, because when the devil showed up to Eve, he said, you should be as God, knowing good and evil, and she knew what he was talking about. Those gods were there, or around someplace. 
if you could get it there or else from people. Eve got hers orally to the mouth. So if the angel got his orally, you'd have to take a bite out of your neck so <laughs> like you've been watching the movies here for the last ten years. And, you know, since demons are birds and winged, you'd say it's like a bat out of space. See? All those things, all those things you find that you can't understand are in here. If there's something that goes on in the world that doesn't make sense, just get in here and put it in it's going to pan out. But of course, nine times out of ten will come out negative. Because this book is against the world, and the world's against this book. So if they got the blood there, they were, uh, they were vampires. Those things, whatever they were. Now the question comes up, how they survived the flood? Okay, the answer is, if they didn't leave the angelic nature, they could have survived by simply leaving and coming back. If they lost their angelic nature and became human beings, there's only one way they could have got off here when the flood came. They'd have had to have some kind of a <laughs> some kind of a flying saucer, UFO, <laughs> to get off here, or else submerge in the water. And when the flood came, go down underwater. To say about uh, 200 miles southeast of the Florida coast. In which case, you have a bad situation there. <laughs> you know, you know, brother, there's so many questions they don't get in college. It's almost hardly worth the time to spend money to go. I mean, you're know, always going up, what's in space? That ain't the problem. The problem is what's underneath you. That's the problem. If I had, if I had 150 billion dollars to throw away, I wouldn't waste time going to Mars or Jupiter. Not me. You know what I do? I take that money and make it a nuclear warhead and go over to uh Eden. And I go down about halfway to the Sea of Petra in the south there in the Dead Sea where Solomon Gomorrah went down, where Dathan Cor and Abiram went down, and where there's gonna be a lake of fire in the millennium. I go there and take that nuclear hit warhead and aim that thing down and blast that thing open about four thousand feet down, and then take another one. And blast about four thousand feet, and then take another one. And go down till something happens. <laughs> and I'll guarantee you something would happen. You say, what would happen? I don't know, but something would happen. <laughs> Over here, I was, uh, I had a meeting one time up in Lansing, Michigan. Brother Green was talking to me going back to the airport. And he told me a fellow whose name I won't, uh, give because, uh, wouldn't want to embarrass the fellow. He didn't, and he didn't tell Brother Green to give it to me. Talking about your dad, Brother up in Lansing, Michigan. Run me back from the church one day. And he's telling me, he's telling me about a found his church, and he didn't give me his name, but he didn't want his name known. But he told me this, he said, we got a guy in our church, he said, that he used to work down there in the, in the Guantanamo base, and worked down there as a deep sea diver, and his job was to dive off the thing, or maybe off the Bermuda Triangle. And he said, the last time that fellow went down, before he quit and got out of there, and came in them, and never decided to go again. And by the same thing that's supposed to happen to John, uh, what's his name? Yeah, the same thing that's supposed to happen to him about eight or nine months ago. This happened to this fellow about four years ago. He went down there, and there's one of these steps, you can photograph something, there's underground, down under the sea, kind of a remnant or something down there. And he said that he heard people screaming. He thought he was getting the band, or getting the deep sea, you know, fairy dreams or something. But he said he kept listening. He said it sounded like people being tortured. He heard this screaming. It got worse and worse, and he couldn't stand it. And he stayed down long enough to make sure it wasn't his equipment, or make sure it wasn't hallucination. I wasn't sure something he ate or he drank. But he couldn't stand anymore. He came back out and came back up and turned his equipment, checked out the left, and came back in and finished and went back again. So there's something out there. There's something down there. So if you ask me that question, I'm guessing now, so I don't teach this doctrinally. This is not one of the fundamentals of faith, brother. <laughs> this is one of Ruckman's peculiar teachings, you know. <laughs> if I was going to guess, I would guess they survive by getting off on some kind of a machine and coming back, or else I'd say they uh, left in their natural condition, their angelic condition, and after the flood came back down again and began to do it again. 
And they're not here now, but the Bible says after the days of Lot, the days of Noah, well, they will be here again. They will come back now and again. All right, something else. Nothing like a Bible to clear up the college education.